And we're live. Another episode of uh, the Johnny and Gene Show. I'm Felix Levine. To my right, Johnny Light and Gene Borello. And to my left, we have our guests today, Susanna and Emiliano. Thank you uh, both for being here. Thank you guys for having us on here. Honor. It's an honor to be here. Before we before we get into it, we just want to give a, uh, first of all, a, a reminder to please subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Uh, like this video, of course, uh, and subscribe to our Patreon channel that you can find in the description of this video. Um, that's where they have all our bonus exclusive content. Everything goes up there early. And a direct uh, line of contact to these two if you want to get um, questions over them to over to them that we do on our Patreon-only Q&As. Um, so check that out if you haven't done so already. And then a big shout out to KCL Automotive that I'll let John talk about very quickly, and then I'll give you the phone number at the end. That's uh, 98 Henry Street, uh, East Stroudsburg, PA. It's, we do uh, handle anything for cars, inspections, tires, auto body work, mechanics, uh, buy here, pay here for people that don't have credit, and used car sales. Anybody who mentions our name or, or the show, you get 10% off. So please look into us. Thank you. And you can call 570-534-8497 for all that contact information. So today we have uh, you two in studio. Thank you for being here. And uh, I know you guys know each other. There's a, <coughs> you know, obviously you're here for, for a particular reason. So I'll let maybe John ta- bring it, uh, yeah. start it. So for people that you know, obviously that watch our show and know me, uh, especially for the justice of people that have been in trouble for the first time, I'm constantly talking about second chance programs or talking about what, we can do to help the young guys or girls that have been in trouble and their families. So for me, this is something special because the people I have on today are Albanian and uh, it's our culture. And uh, this really hits my heart because of the injustice that's been done to her son and uh, his brother. And uh, I'm gonna let them explain some of it and then I'm gonna jump back in and see what we can do for the family. And for the people that are out there listening, especially Albanians that are listening, um, please uh, put your word out there and contact and try to help out with the situation. Contact me and let's make our voices heard for the injustices, especially in the criminal system. Thank you. Thank you, John, and thank you guys for having us here. Um, it has been actually almost five years since our Andy first was being accused, our son Andy, my oldest son Andy Vangeli, he's being accused for criminal actions against a young girl that actually is a former girlfriend of my youngest son Emiliano. And um, this girl is also a daughter of a former bail commissioner in Philadelphia, Timothy O'Brien, very well known. Timothy O'Brien is very well known in Philadelphia because he brutally hit a young woman twice. 2013, 2014, a former girlfriend of his. Because of his violations to the law, he didn't have a choice. So his friends, actually in Philadelphia, the judges, um, the district attorney saved him, saved Timothy O'Brien from going to jail but he wasn't allowed to practice the bail commissioner. So what happened that time, this girl actually previously accusing Andy, like I said, she was a former girlfriend of Emiliano. Emiliano caught her cheating. She said, I'm pregnant. And Emiliano gave her compassion, gave her financial support, not just Emiliano, all of us. And here we are, you know, the baby was born in June 5th, 2015. And this girl, of course, Emiliano couldn't do the DNA back then because it was very expensive during, during, during her pregnancy. During the pregnancy, yeah. Yeah, but um, as soon as the baby was born two weeks later, Emiliano did first the DNA himself and came that the baby girl wasn't his baby. The and baby course, is not his baby. The wow. baby it's is not, not Emiliano's baby. And uh, we all got attached, not just Emiliano, all of us, with a baby. And um, because we went to the has- has- hospital the day that she was born. And uh, I held her on my arms. And here is Emiliano on one side and Andy on the other side in a hospital. And me having this baby, hoping that this baby will be my granddaughter. And, you know, 
and of course, like I said, two weeks later, we, you know, Emiliano had the first DNA came negative and the father of the girl said, okay, Timothy O'Brien, Emiliano had a kind of fair relation, I'll call it, but Emiliano can explain that better, the relation with this guy, but, um, but this girl and her, um, she went to the court, to the family court. If there wasn't, she needed child support. So she sued Emiliano. For after the first test too, after that the first test came out negative that I wasn't the child's father. That's when she went to the family courts. <laughs> was still trying to get, get a second test for me to do, which I did, that came out negative as well. And you know, the biggest factor that my brother's sitting in jail right now was all over social media. It's, it was for, you know, making jokes and trying to embarrass the girl, you know, but at the time we were being stupid and writing stuff back and forth, but they just blew it out of proportion, like way out of proportion. He shouldn't be in jail for one day. And that's what power and, you know, when people are out to get you will do. What did she say he did that he got to jail? What was the situation? So the, the main, the main reason he's in jail, he's seen her at a gas station and he put the window down and, you know, was making fun of her, saying stupid things, you know, jokes. And she says that he pulled the gun out on her. At the time, I had, a, I had bought a gun when I found out I was, you know, I was having a child because we don't live in one of the best neighborhoods in Philadelphia. It's, you never know. She knew I had a gun. She used that and that was the first, you know. Wait, they, did they find a firearm on him? They found the firearm. They didn't have, you know, they didn't have no cause to come in the house. Right. They had a warrant. She waited one month to to go to the police station, which, which the day that my Registered? Got unregistered? It, registered gun. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's exactly why, you know, this, this whole thing is, it seems made up. Honestly. So what was the problem if it's a registered firearm? We don't know. It was registered. It was in my name. You know, it was in my room they went straight to my room i wasn't there Ma, they went to straight to yes. my room that day when they came there was uh, december 2nd 2015 me andy and oh. their father my husband Ilirian, we were there and they knocked on the door they had this warrant wow. they were mm -hmm. you know now they wore like casual black clothing yeah they were detectives that's why and detectives and um, they explained to that uh, us that to that later but um like emiliano said because he explained to emiliano what happened one of them they already knew where the gun was because right. she knew about the gun it's no question about it and he got the gun and it was being sarcastic came down here we got the gun i said all right we said all right we didn't know that is a gun here i mean i didn't know and my husband i don't know if andy knew about it but he didn't say anything and then two days later, they arrested Andy, okay. saying on the street. So I want to, because I know I had gun charges before. Um, in the state of New York, a gun in a house, first of all, is a lesser charge than a felony, usually. And if it's not loaded, you know, one in the chamber or a clip in it, it could be a misdemeanor. Right. And especially it being a registered firearm, I don't even know how he'd be in jail. We don't know either. That's what we're trying to figure out, too. Maybe. Well, I, I'm assuming they're trying to say that he had your gun illegally on the street. Point, of course. Pointing at her, and that's what the charge is. Yeah, yes. That, so they used that, that gun as a... As with no a, gun? Uh, he got caught at the scene with the gun? No. no. That's impossible no to video, hold up. No video, no nothing. That's, in, that's a hearsay. And then in the courtroom, she was trying to say that she wasn't sure if it was a gun or his belt buckle. No. Oh, so, yeah. Now, uh, her, her, her testimony is... That she wasn't sure if it was a, a belt buckle, and how about the father of the baby? Now has he come forward? Whoever he is, uh, I'm not sure to be honest with you. I think so, but I don't. I is don't she know. is she with that gentleman? To be honest, John, I don't know because I don't have no social media. I don't have none of that, and I try to stay away from like. So what did he plea out to exactly? Like what was the charge? Gun charge. Gun charge. Terroristic char threats. Terroristic uh, threats. Gun and he pled out to what? How much time did they give him? They gave him two to five. Two to five years for a registered firearm and no yep. video. Gun wasn't caught at the scene, and she said she wasn't sure it was his belt buckle. Yes. Yep. And who was the attorney representing him? At nah. that time, uh, Jonathan James. And Jonathan this, James. this guy... Did he go to trial with it, or did he... He pushed, my brother, he pushed my brother to go against the judge. He didn't want my brother to go against the jury. He persuaded him that if he goes against the jury, 
you know, with being said that she's a woman in, in the United a, States. That he did a judge aside. trial? He did a judge That's trial. That's worse. Why he, would he do that? He got persuaded. I'm in the room wow. with him at the time that the, the, the lawyer was telling him, you know, I know this guy. I think it's going to be easier if we go against this judge. And I'm looking at my brother, you know, I see like pain in his eyes and he just, his whole world flashing by him. And I'm telling him, go with what you're feeling in your head. Don't listen to this dude. Right in front of the lawyer too. I wasn't trying to be disrespectful, but I'm like, don't listen to him. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to mom. Go with what you feel. Was it a one or two day trial? Yeah, something like that. I think it was like two, three days. And did they offer him a plea prior to trial? No. Because they never offered him anything. I nothing. wasn't. I actually wasn't in the no the cop room. out first offense gun. Nothing. No cop out. I don't think so. No. no. Wow, that's weird. The lawyer actually <clears throat> offered something. No, in a court. I mean, nothing was done in a court like the offer. But there was like behind. Let's say, this lawyer, uh, Jonathan James, he actually said to Andy, if the district attorney is offering like five years probation, you mm -hmm. want to take it. And Andy said, no, I'm not guilty. So, right. And um, Andy pleaded not guilty. And this lawyer, Jonathan James, actually, he said that me and the judge went to school together. And, you know, I know this judge, mm -hmm. he's a fair judge. And plus, Andy, the time was going through a lot. Andy, a few hours before the trial, Andy went to emergency room. Andy had prior two car accidents, and that caused had concussions, depression, anxiety. So Andy was like few hours prior to the trial to the emergency room. And this judge, we told the judge actually, that see what what is happening. We have to take care of Andy now. We don't have to rush to have a trial. But this, this lawyer said, Andy's gonna walk free. I right. you know the judge and you know. Yeah, well. And, a lot of times what judges do when they hear that he had an offer of five years probation and judges automatically think that we're guilty. That's a, all, most of them. It's usually the prosecutor and sometimes even your own lawyer and the judge against you. Against That's what it is. But a lot of times when the judge will hear that you had an offer of probation, now he's going to max you out when you blow trial because he's like, you had the chance to take this probation. Now I'm going to give you this. Like and they do it all the time. Him. Yeah, they do it all the time. That's, that's how they are. But so. the, the problem with the credibility of the girl especially since she said it was his baby and it wasn't. And then she said the belt buckle. How was the judge? Why didn't uh, the attorney for Andy press that issue? That it wasn't the baby? Did he press it in court, in open court? I mean, from what they were telling me, because I wasn't allowed in the room at the time because I was a witness, and they wouldn't let me come in as the trial was going on. So I'm pretty sure he was, right, Mike? Like, he was pressing the fact that I wasn't the father of the child and... Why are they still yes, coming after Yes, he was saying him? that, but uh, of course he should have fight harder for Andy. This lawyer, that looks like, because this lawyer, Jonathan James, always was telling Andy, you got to act, you got to be an actor. And, you know, and this lawyer was like acting, and he wasn't fighting hard. And, of course, he had to mention that fact is a fact. Emiliano is not the father of the baby girl. And of course, she's been lying and she's been making stories, different stories about the gun. And on top of this gun story, she made it like harassment, stalking, intimidation with witnesses. And, you know, like... Well, intimidating witnesses is bad. Yeah, it's a bad. Yeah, it's a bad choice. Yeah, but there was mm -hmm. the way that she made it right. was like she came to our neighborhood, you know, in a store. Yeah, he's, where seen, her, Andy was. he's seen her in a beer store around the corner from our house and... You know, he started filming her and everything so that she wouldn't say, like, he hit her or he punched her. Because, like, other times she said that, too. Like, he spit on her, right. swung at her. So this time, you know, they were trying to use that he was filming her and he wasn't allowed to film her. And they just played a game that, you know, you know, they won, in, in effect. Because my brother was kind of fueling them on the social media and with the things he was saying, so... They are trying to make him out to be like this monster and that he was crazy. And well, yeah, listen, he has, you know, he should have brought somebody in from, I don't know what, did he call any witnesses from for your brother? I'm talking about a therapist, a psychologist, anybody. No. Because no. they should have showed the the uh, trauma to your brother, the depression to your brother, thinking anybody that thinks that's your baby and it's not your baby. Right. Emotionally, 
of course, there's going to be emotional things. There's going to be depression. There's going to be, you're going to be upset. You're going to say things uh, that normally you wouldn't say because you're very hurt. And he should have showed some of these th emotions along with uh, the, the car accident on top of that. And I don't know if he was on medications, but I don't understand. What's the relationship between uh, Timothy O'Brien and the judge? What's the relationship between those two? Timothy O'Brien, uh, the judge, Edward Wright, that's his name. Um, he's African-American. I mean, one of the reasons, actually, I cannot say it's my fault, too, that kind, I thought this judge would be fair, because me, working for the city of Philadelphia, working at Free Library of Philadelphia, the whole crew is African-American people, and uh, I, I have so many friends, and I don't know what made me think this judge will be fair, African American judge and um, uh, Democrat, Democrat judge. So uh, that time I was so much prior, and that time I would I had so many Democrat friends. And what made me think that this judge, trusting this lawyer, that this judge will be fair. No, but the, Marcus, they're asking about the relation that the, the relation, relationship okay. that them two had together, as far as yes, the relation now between uh, yes, I wanted to come to that, but um, uh, real quick, you're right, Emiliano. Um, go to the point. This judge worked as a clerk for Timothy O'Brien's cousin, even first cousin or brother. O'Brien and O'Brien and Associates is a law firm. So this judge, prior becoming an attorney, and of course a judge, because there are steps becoming attorney first and then the judge, he worked as a clerk. I believe 1990, something like that, he was the, how you call that when you go to the law school and like internship or internship, something? Internship, yeah. So this um, law firm hired this Edward Wright as a clerk, so somehow, you know, it's not just that that fact that is a big fact, but also Timothy O'Brien working in criminal court, thirteen oh one Filbert Street in Philadelphia. He knows oh, he's right all the, the judges. He was he was there for most than more than twenty years. Worked as a bail commissioner. It's not just Edward Wright that has the relation with. Timothy O'Brien. There's so many judges that he knows there that he worked with. There's so many district attorneys that he knows. There's so many. I have proof of so many of them defense attorneys that being straight with me saying, Mrs. Vangeli, uh, we feel bad for, you know, for your son, but we cannot take this case because we are friends with Timothy O'Brien. We have a personal relation with this guy you know, and we cannot so take So let me ask you something. Timothy O'Brien, the girl he beat up, was it a wife, girlfriend that he that he, he beat up, or was girlfriend. it two different? Was it the same One, girl twice? twice. One twi twice. The second time at the hospital, they asked her, what, what do you want with this guy? Because the first time he smashed your face on the wall and he did mess up with your face and with your breath, I mean, emotionally, what do you want to do with this guy for the second time? And I don't know what her answer was, but the second time was, you know, worse because he choked her with, with a lamp cord. Wow. Yeah. Was he arrested for these charges? He was arrested, but they gave him probation. Was any of these brought up during the trial of your son? No. Uh, somehow this attorney, Jonathan James, he started saying something, but the judge didn't let him go on with that. That was pretty, but uh, there are big articles uh, with the inquirer. Well, what I'm trying to get at is, I don't know if I'm not a lawyer and I'm not sure if you can get that into court. What I'm trying to get at is if he beat her up, the girlfriend twice, most likely he was Choked beating up. up the daughter. And some of the hostility that the daughter has maybe because of the way the father beat her up and, and angling it towards your son because maybe she has uh, mixed feelings about men because the father is a, a woman beater. So you don't know what's going on at house. He, I, I would figure you can get some of that. You could have got some of that into, into evidence if the lawyer would have tried to show that it is important because his actions towards women most likely is those same actions are towards his daughter. Right, right. 
they wouldn't, yeah, they wouldn't let him do that, you know. And uh, my brother, she definitely had resentment towards my brother because he never liked her. And now, was, why is any? I don't mean to cut you. Why was it? Did anybody apply? Did the for him to be in a halfway house for anybody to get a second chance program to get anything? Uh, no, nothing. He was supposed to get boot camp, which was six months. But they ruled it violent. They ruled it violent, and they yeah. he got written up for like arguing and inside, mm -hmm. and it was his fault regardless. So they. They took him off that list right away. Well, they could do that behind the scenes. Yeah. I had a judge pretty much do that to me. And they didn't want me to go into shock. So they made sure I didn't get shock. Let me go back to the father again. Timmy o Timothy O'Brien. Did he ever do any time? Did, was he ever in prison no. for us? No. Did he ever get probation? Probation, yes, we hear. But we don't know what the story is. But he was. Uh, there was an article for him because while he was on probation... He shouldn't be close to any department working for the criminal law. So somehow one of them councilmen, David Oh, he, he, he hired Timothy O'Brien for the city of Philadelphia in a criminal department. And he got caught, of course, you know, and uh, they were asking David Oh, what are you, why you hired this guy? Do you know that he did? And he said, I'm giving him a second chance. Second chance in a criminal department? He had two chances. He beat her up twice, right? Yes. Was he arrested both times? Yes, he was arrested both times. But, uh, you know, uh, he Do knows too many people. Does he have children with that woman? No. Was that will, Is that woman willing to give statements outside of the public statements that are already made? We don't know who she is, even Emiliano. I mean, do you know Emiliano who she is? No, I mean, I, I knew. You said, you said he choked her with a cord, though, also, yes. right? Yeah. Yes. In New York, that's a B felony. That's attempted murder. Yeah. That's yes. a serious, serious charge. So never mind beating her. That's bad. Choking her, that's a that's a 10-year sentence you could get for that, where right. I'm from. Right. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, he's politically. Oh, yes. You know. So what's that? What's Tell the process you. been like since, um, since then? He's been, so he's been in, in jail for three years now? He's been in jail for three years. And you have, I mean, you're able to see him or con like, what's that? We get video visits with him now, you know, due to the COVID stuff going on. No more, you know, in-person visitations. We actually just spoke to him on Sunday, it was, right, Ma? Or Saturday? Yes, Sunday, Sunday was his father's birthday. And, of course, Andy's trying to hold up. Andy has a strong personality. And, of course, like he says, he's human. And, you know, he's um, very connected with all of us especially with me and um he's trying to be strong of course he got for us and for himself i'm sorry to cut you off how many times did he get denied parole too because every time that he's up for Three parole times. they put him in a cell with uh someone who's you know he's fighting he's fighting in jail not really as much fighting but getting into arguments he's gotten to a couple of fights too so yeah you know and there were automatic write-ups because he's trying to defend himself and they denied parole three times how old is he He's 29. Nine. And what, what's, it, what's his max out date? His max out date, I think, is not this June coming up, 2022. So June 2022. Okay. And yeah. there's a PCRA going on, post-conviction relief act. And, of course, they drag in that because of the yeah. COVID. And, um, but... Um, what is actually during the forcing of the incarceration, Andy, at what bothers me and the family, that Andy actually been actually like provoked from some gangsters, let's say, and the most, of, but the most that bothers me, there are some guards actually that they play with the inmates. With him, with these guys, and because of the COVID, and these guys be 23 hours in a cell, you know, Andy was is being provoked. Like, it's in a let's say American movie, of course, with an Albanian story. I mean, taken, very famous, and these guys were put in this movie when this COVID started, like off and on for you know and. Comparing Andy with them guys in a movie, saying, here yeah. you are, like them guys. Making remarks and stuff. Like. Making remarks. And that, well, this that, is the problem with the jail system. You have some good guards, and then you got a lot of pieces of shit. Oh, right. And, right. and they're not exposed. What jail is this? This, this was Smithfield, SCI Smithfield. He's back at Camp Hill now, so. 
Yeah, yeah he's been he moved, and moved. moved yeah. but uh, what bothered me, and I wrote letters to the governor of uh, Pennsylvania, Tom Wolf. I am, oh. of course, his staff, and um, they said they're going to look into it, but they've been going around. Yeah. With that, with the, with the governor, they never really release anybody. It's so rare because then if he does something, he comes out, it's like a political thing where it's his responsibility if he lets his person out. So writing to the governor usually is 98% never going to work. Right. I didn't think that the governor yeah. will release him. Right. I just thought for, you know, how these guards yeah, we're talking to make about, them they're trying right. to make their life, life right. more you know, worse than it is, actually. How you can provoke somebody and saying that you are like them guys in a movie there, you know, and he don't have nothing to do with that, actually. He's no terrorist calling a guy oh, like right. Andy a terrorist. He's no terrorist. So and, uh, on top of that, threatening Andy, we're going to kill your family. Because Andy's seen some of them guards, how they do illegal, you know, with the inmates, like... But he's not in that jail anymore, right? No, but and what jail was that? SCI Smithfield. It's like three and a half hours from Philadelphia. Huntington. Yeah, it was in Huntington, PA. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know where. Huntington, it was. PA. I mean, the other staff, and they have a good superintendent there, Jamie Looper. I never, I never forget her. Because she used to email me. I was having a bad anxiety at the time, actually. And um, she emailed me, and like you said, John, they are good people and bad people. Well, the there. reflection's always on who's running the jail. In, in Ocean County, uh, New Jersey, the people that run the jail uh, run it like gentlemen, and I think it, it follows the guards that act the same way. So, you know, when you have somebody running these institutes in a good way, you, the guards follow suit. And I mean, that goes in anything, I guess, in, in businesses. When they have somebody that's running that facility like shit, like garbage, excuse my language, you're going to have the guards behave in the same way. And, you know, usually those same guards that are doing that, eventually they're going to run into the wrong guy, maybe not Andy. And, uh, you know, that changes things in dramatically uh, for some of these guards, just like uh, you're seeing on the street today. You know, I, I advocate for pro police, but a lot of these guys that are doing the wrong thing, uh, it reflects on the rest of the guys. And, and, and that's a situation where you got to get these guards to step in and stop the, the guards that are doing that harassing inmates. And it's hard for them to do it yeah. because most people are weak. And they they go with together. the group. They stick together. They stick together. Yeah. Right, right. I dealt with that. They stick together. I mean, they'll lie for each other, everything. I see. Yeah. Well, because they haven't never been persecuted themselves right. for it. Mm. So, you, you know, if you start charging them the same way they charge uh, guys on the street, then that'll stop. But uh, they seem to be getting away with it. And right. uh, and that's where you need somebody that's good leadership running these places. Because some of the, you know, I've been in jails all over, and there's some decent guys that run them, and, you know, the, the, uh, some of the guards are decent. And then you got guys that are garbage in some of the locations, and they're going to do, and they're going to take care, take advantage of your son's situation. Unfortunately, um, this case was handled wrong, uh, and it should have been advised in a different way from the attorney uh, to, I'm not sure about the legalities of, uh, you know, moving that case somewhere else or out of the hands of that judge because uh, this Timothy O'Brien, who's obviously manipulating the system, obviously is a garbage piece of shit uh, for beating up one woman, tying up the other one with a cord around her neck and abusing the system. So obviously he thinks he can get away with it. And he obviously he has gotten away with it. So, uh, you know, we're talking from a criminal standpoint, from changing our life to a, a different standpoint. But he hasn't paid for his crimes, obviously, yet. And, you know, so when you do, maybe that'll change things than where he thinks he stands now. I, I'd just like to get some information you know, on the case from you afterwards. Send me some paperwork and we'll look into it and see. I want to see if we can investigate and look into see who the girl is that he, he beat up, strangled, because it's got to be in the paperwork, hospitals, uh, police stations, and find out why these uh, people are involved in the law enforcement system and the court system still friendly with this guy because uh, he shouldn't be involved in the, in the system, especially after what he did. Yes, yes. That's what we hope. We've never been giving up, actually, and... Um 
<laughs> like I said, I, I heard about you, John, and I didn't hear about you guys, but uh, now we know. And uh, of course, and when I spoke with John and he said, come on, we gonna talk about it. And there was just a big hope, like a light in a tunnel, we call it. But we never been, you know, we never will give up. Of course, we've been trying the way that we know with the lawyers. I mean, we've been trusting lawyers. That's all we know to pay these lawyers. And they've been telling us that this is piece of cake. We've been having so much more complicated cases and we've been winning. That's what they told us from the start. And, yeah. You know, they, we just kept believing them, trusting them. And of course, um, you know, but we never going to give up. And, uh, we're telling Andy that... It's the toughest woman I know, man. <laughs> toughest woman right here. Uh -huh. Not just because it's my mom. She's probably one of the toughest, you know. She's tougher than my dad, too, right? <laughs> <laughs> she is, man, honestly. The Albanian women are tougher than the yeah, men. Yeah, they are tough. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you ain't kidding. Yeah. Woman off. i never seen her break down, ever, this whole time this has been going on within the five years. She never showed Well, her. unfortunately, he's basically in jail for nothing. That's the yeah, shame nothing. of it. You know, there's guys like, you know, we've done a lot of time and other guys do a lot of time. And I know to an average family, obviously, like yourselves, right. it's a lot of time. But for us, we <clears> faced <throat> some serious, serious time. But it's for, guy, for crimes we did commit. Right. And when, when someone's innocent and he's been through what he's been through and your family's been through, and especially with the situation with the baby and her lying about that or uh, not being completely truthful and... The judge not recognizing. I just don't understand why they're not recognizing the uh, the depression, the uh, where your mindset is thinking that's your baby, and then thrown in the mix of the father, who's a real piece of shit. Right. And I can't say that enough to the camera, uh, <laughs> Timothy O'Brien, sort of people that didn't get that name. That's uh, abusing the system, abusing his power, abusing his connections, in the in the legal system. Because of guys like you, you got people rioting in the streets. Timothy O'Brien again. So, man up. Uh, and uh, I don't know what to say. The guy's, uh, the guy, to my, what I think is he forced the situation with the girl to go lie about your brother. Of course. Um, of course. And I think he 1, beat it. I think his lawyer should have looked into the fact is, was he aggressive and beating his daughter on a regular basis? And if I had to guess, he probably was by those actions that he did with his girlfriend. So yeah. I would think that he uh, beat his daughter pretty good. And I think the lawyer should have looked into that first and seen if he has a track record because probably beating up that girl and his and putting a rope around wasn't the first time he's done it. No. He probably has a history of this. Of course, he divorced their mother, her mother, should since have they into were bambinos. Right, yeah. right. He didn't care for the children. Yeah. He left their mother with four children, four little kids when they were very little and he just living a womanizer, living his life. We hired the female in between these lawyers, we hired the female lawyer. She was a district attorney too. And she said when she heard about, because I had to tell her from the start, you know, that what are we dealing with? And she said, Timothy O'Brien. Oh, I remember him. He's a womanizer. And of course, yeah, this guy, like you said, he, you know, who knows what deep down this guy, I mean, we know. Well, obviously. the woman eyes apart, you know, listen, a lot of guys and, you know, we're all guilty of that and not guilty, but the, the hitting the woman and, and hitting his daughter and, and, and not being a gentleman about the situation. And it, it, if that was his baby or he thought it was his baby and to go through that, would he put your family through? He should have a little decency. And uh, step back from the situation. It was the embarrassment. Yeah. It was the embarrassment that made him do this, you know? Especially my brother trying to expose him about the stuff we're well, talking about. it was very about. important. That's why it was important to find yeah. out who the, the real baby, uh, the father is of that baby also. Because you could see if there were situations going on with the family with him also. I'm just curious. You, you, the lawyer should have dug deeper all around and, and, and found out through an investigator what his history was past the girl he beat up, what his history is with beating up his own daughter, what her history is with another baby's father, if there was more of this uh, lying and uh, blaming uh, the uh, the ex, whatever he is, or whoever she's involved with now. Right. should have did some more of this. And and to get five-year probation, I mean, uh, I, I even did. not being guilty, he should have got that down to a year. I don't understand why he didn't with no past history. 
His no lawyer. gun at the scene of the crime. No, that's it's unheard of. Right, right. The lawyer was against him a thousand percent. That's why none of it was brought up. And then when we showed this case to other people, they read it and everything and said, like, there's a lot of stuff that your brother's lawyer didn't object to that he should have objected to. Like, How long has this lawyer been in business, do you know? And where'd you get him from? The Maybe. one that started his case. Mm -hmm. He's on fifth, what is it, 15th and Walnut? 15th and Walnut. Schwartz and... Uh, James who, Schwartz who recommended and Associates. Him? Uh, some Albanian friends, they had their son was in trouble for something, and they said, this yeah. guy, know him, actually his partner, is older, um, Michael Schwartz. He's one of them guys that the owner of the firm, law firm. But this guy got sick, so he passed the case to Jonathan James Partners. Mm -hmm. And they've been in business there a little while. And then we met Tino Tinari later, but it was too late. Tino Tinari is pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if you heard yeah, about Tino him. Tinari, yes. you know him. He said, oh, what have you done? Like, you know, I was here. And I said, Nino, what what can you do for us now? And of course, Nino been trying, you know. But um, you know, it just it is what it is now. And we have to pick up the pieces and get it. You're again. kind of out of time now to do much with it because yes. he's only got a year and something left. And yes, there's not much. The only thing is, uh, I'd like to look at the paperwork to see what we can do about Timothy O'Brien. Okay. And. Uh, also looking to see what what's going on as far as why he never got received any kind of halfway house or any secondary treatment mm -hmm. that he had some it's things crazy. that he could have fought for. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, with no record prior I history. Mean, I had I got less time than your brother for trying to shoot somebody in front of a bar on probation, prior violence, and got three, and got less time than him. Yeah, Caught with the gun at the scene of the crime, ran from the police, <laughs> got beat up by the cops, and your brother got more time than I did. Think about that. It's crazy. It's a game they're playing against yeah. him. And they're actually trying to have him max out right now, too. Though. So that's what's even worse. They want him to max out, for sure, with all the times that they, you know, denied his parole and everything. And the way they're provoking him, they're trying to make him snap. And Yeah, that's what know. we've been worried, actually, that Andy somehow, because, you know, he's fair, <coughs> he's straight, he's, and Andy has them vibes that uh, Andy always tells you straight. It's wrong. Yeah. I don't like it. Is that kind of guy, and he has a big heart. That's why we thought that somehow he's not gonna, you know. Well, there's a big Albanian community in Philadelphia. You should yes. get them to speak out, people, and against uh, what's gone on with the abuse of Timothy O'Brien, and get some signatures. Uh, I would get in touch with whoever's ahead of his probation, parole, mm -hmm. and uh, try to see if you can make some noise about what's going on, and and not keep it underground and quiet. Okay. But, uh, Anybody that's out there that's listening to the show, please uh, contact our show to get in touch with him at johnelite.com on my website, or my Instagram, John Elite Officially, or or uh, my personal Instagram at Felix.Levine, or just the at Johnny and Jean Show Instagram um, if you uh, want to get in touch with us. And then um, Jean Boy six six six, you could uh, contact me, DM me, I answer everybody, you yeah. know, and so. Contact me whenever. And we wanna we wanna just say thank you for for taking right. the time for coming down and uh, you know. Obviously. Do you have? A, I'm sorry to cut you off. Do you have any contacts that somebody can reach you? If anybody knows anything about this case, I don't have any. Uh, uh, anybody knows Facebook, anything? I have Facebook, Emiliano Vangeli, on yeah. Facebook. That's the only social. Media you can I reach have. me, Susanna Vangeli, on Facebook, Instagram, under my name, Twitter, is like Zemrat. It's like the Albanian word hearts. Heart. Uh, is Z I didn't even know you had all that, man. <laughs> R A T and the phone number two one five two nine two three three one eight and my email address Susanna's Vangeli at AOL dot com. So if anybody's any information about the case, past history of that can help their, her son and a bro his brother, please uh, contact any of those uh, that you you you'd like to contact. Really appreciate it. Thank you guys, and uh, obviously, you know, praying for your family and hopefully. Uh, Thank you guys so much. Yeah. For Thank having you. us on here. It's a big honor. Thank you Thank so you. very Thank much. You.